Hello and welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me in another of our Lawful Remedies the, with the Clever Clogs. I'm Richard Vobes and with me as ever is Karen Dodd. Hello, Karen. Hello, Richard. How are you? I'm okay. We had, um, we had a, sorry, just getting some technical stuff. We've had a bit of a, a, a major panic here in the studio whilst we were getting everything ready and sorting a few things out. Last minute panic as it always happens on a live show. We had a fantastic show last time, did we not, a week ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, 18,000, well, 18,500 people were watching. Brilliant. Um, not live, as, no. a, as, a, 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 as of this time, but we had about 1,000 people watching live. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for that. Really appreciate you coming on and watching. We had some fantastic, a fantastic panel. To tell us about the panel tonight, Karen? Tonight, Richard, we have, um, we have David Edelman, who is the people's lawyer, so he's waiting in the wings there. And we also have um, Chris Coverdale, who has been very active bringing um, co-ops together and helping people with various issues to do with tax. And he's come in last minute, so we're very grateful to have Chris there. We were also going to have Mick Stott, who set up Guardians 300, but Mick, unfortunately, is, is delayed. He's just returning from Ireland. He's worked with Dolores Carhill. So um, we might be lucky to have Alan of Salisbury, lastminute.com, if Alan can get to an electric supply in time. So he might join us for the, for the second part of the show. But if not, I mean, these two guys we've got are pretty phenomenal. Brilliant. OK, well, thank you very much, uh, panel, for coming along and uh, joining us tonight. We're very much looking forward to your knowledge. I should just point out this is an entertainment only show. This is not what you might call legal information, but it might be useful information. Um, and that is the way to put it. Somebody uh, did um, email me and uh, tried something that was on the show and um, has got himself a little bit in difficulty and do stress you have to know what you're doing before you do anything don't just take little snippets because mm. a little bit of knowledge mm. is, is a, can dangerous. Be a yeah dangerous absolutely yeah, absolutely yeah um where should we go first of all Karen? Uh, well i reckon from last week i mean there were a lot of questions and um, they're probably coming in now and it's quite hard to sort of monitor them but we'll do our best but on the back of last week's show we had a, a question which actually works well because Chris is here. And, and it's from a viewer, I have no name, but it says from a viewer, I wasn't able to see the live show, but I did watch the recording last night and it was very informative, so thank you for that. However, there were no answers to Chris Coverdale's trust set up. But thinking about it, I believe the four page documents you have on your site are the personal lawful trust. So this is gonna to be to you, Chris. Um, the documents that are all that we require. So it's really about the trust and um, anything else in that, by the way. Yeah. How does how do people send questions in? So questions, you just go into the chat box here if you're live and, and hopefully we get to them. So, Chris, do you want to talk about kind of what you're doing, your trust, your co-ops and, and maybe a recent experience that you've just gone through? Oh, right. Thank you, um, Karen. Yes, that I will. Um, very brief background. I found out in 20... 2002 that it was a criminal offence to wage war and our government has been committing criminal offences and waging illegal wars for 75 years. In addition to that, I discovered that it is a, crim a serious criminal offence to fund a, a war of aggression and any taxpayer who pays tax uh, knowing that some of the money will be used by their government to fund war or to support another war commits a <coughs> excuse me it commits a criminal offence. So in the light of that, I started to um, stop paying tax, and um, have been really working on that ever since. Now the underlying principle that I think is relevant to today and trying to find solutions to our problems is all really, really to do with using the system that the uh, establishment use against us, against them. So I have spent most of my life looking at systems in organizations and I have de devised and a system which they use particularly to uh, keep their taxes away from the tax man and us, the people of uh, Britain, uh, top 100,000 people in this country, maybe 50 to 100,000 people, set up 
tax uh, trusts or trusts overseas to keep their taxes and their money away from the British government, the tax man in particular. And uh, I thought, well, OK, let's use the same system, which is a trust to put our taxes in trust for the government on condition that they use them lawfully at all times and never use them to uh, for criminal offenses such as war, war crimes, crimes against humanity and genocide. So that's really where I've been for the last um, six years or so, developing trust documents, systems that people can use easily for themselves to withhold taxes lawfully. And that's the important bit about it is that whenever we pay tax, we give our consent to the government uh, to use the money in whatever way they wish. And it's about time we stopped doing that. We must not allow our government to use our money to fund genocide. And particularly right now, the genocide in Palestine. So this is a process that I recommend. We set up a website, probityco.com. On that website are two, um, sorry, there was probityco.org and probityco.com. On the probityco.org website, there is a, a four page uh, trust document, which you can download for free and uh, fill in. And then as soon as you've filled that in and had it witnessed, you have uh, completed a trust in which you have your taxes. Um, and uh, you put a few, uh, you put some of the money into a box and you are at home, uh, a folder, a strong box, whatever. And once you have signed and had that trust document witnessed, you are, you have a trust that is uh, lawful and ensures that the government cannot get at your money until they prove that none of it will be used for criminal purposes. So that's Chris. the basic system and uh, an introduction to it. And I recommend doing that uh, and getting it off as soon as you can. Uh, sorry, getting it signed and witnessed as soon as you can and then sending copies to any government organization, including the local council, the DBLA, or Revenue and Customs, right? Um, so that you can um, stop paying tax. So, Chris, um, how, how you've been doing this for six years. Um, we've got a question, actually, uh, which Karen is going to ask you in a second. He says, passing the buck. Because um, <laughs> you can't read my writing. Because I can't read her writing. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, and, but uh, how is it going? Is Generally, does it work? Are people, are, are the tax, are people not having to pay the tax because of the trust set up? Is that, is that doing what it's supposed to be doing? Well, it seems to be, yes. I mean, in my case, uh, I haven't paid any council tax for seven years. And uh, they just cancelled my uh, debt at the end of the year and start again. Right. So uh, that works for me. And I know it works for a lot of other people. Um, last year, a very few people um, in February last year started this tax trust. And by April, um, they had they certainly one or two of them received um, details saying that they don't owe any money to the revenue and customs or. So presumably the, the revenue and customs. Um... I'm just trying to find my camera there. Well, one of them. Um, they're, they're familiar with it. So, Karen, you, you've got a question. Yeah, that's I in. have. Yeah, it, it's come up a couple of times by the same the same viewer. Um, so H, the HMRC, they're not responding to the trust that's been set up by this viewer and they're threatening enforcement officers. So so how, how would one deal with that? I think yeah, we need to write back to them and say, look, um, I am upholding the law. It is a criminal offence if I hand this money over to you and you need to prove to me that it isn't. Now, they keep saying that uh, tax law applies and that uh, the, the laws that we quote, the International Criminal Court Act and the Terrorism Act 2000, do not apply. That is totally incorrect. 
these laws are the most important laws this country's ever signed up to against genocide and against acts of terrorism wherever they are. And the important bit associated with both of those is that it is we are accessories aiding and abetting the crime if we hand the money to the government. We know that they spend 10% of our money on mass murder and genocide in uh, so seven countries in uh, the last 20 years. So, so don't so do it. So just to answer that guy's question, or, or lady's question, man or woman, whoever it was, um, a follow-up letter is required. Is, is that what you're saying? Yes, and it send them another copy of your declaration and deed. And right. this is, you have yeah. said, I'm very happy to pay the money if you can prove to me that none of it will be spent on criminal purposes. Right, OK. Because I think that links to another question from Zen here, saying what tactics will... A, um, HMRC used to get their money from you if you are in a trust what can we expect but are you saying just keep keep writing what happens if they do knock on the door well I mean basically uh, you have to send them away uh, it doesn't always work but um, unfortunately our systems in this country are so corrupt that uh, the bailiffs and the others will say these laws don't apply and you have to keep trying and I think the important bit is to try to get a lot of local people on your side, get a group going who really understand these laws and what you are trying to do. Right. I mean, and presumably, I mean, before you do any of this, you, like I said before, you've got to really know what you're doing mm -hmm. and be familiar with everything. Because if you get a letter back and you don't know how to respond to that, you're a bit stuck. Should we ask David, how, how do you deal with HMRC? <laughs> Well, let me tell you a story, as someone <laughs> Max Bargraves used Mr. to say. Yeah. I want to tell you a story. <laughs> I want to tell you a story. Right, <laughs> going back, I'm going to take you back to um, round about t 2009, 2010. I was running a limited company that took me into schools teaching bridge, the card game. That mm. was Mr. Mini Bridge Limited. And then three years of that, um, and it was doing very well, but it was doing so well, in, in fact, I got defunded because it was becoming a threat to the uh, system. It led me then to write a book about it. And um, my income stream collapsed. Uh, meanwhile, HMRC didn't really care about that. They were used to me filling out tax returns. And I had, I had a bit of a crooked, I won't say a crooked, but I had a very clever and sly bookkeeper and he would make sure that I never paid more than about £20 a year tax. So we're not talking, you know, we're not talking about Donald Trump here or Rockefeller. I mean, I'm really, you can't get much smaller than Mr. Minibris Limited. But anyway, because so, it really is a matter of principle. So having no income stream and getting these letters um, remind, starting out as reminders that I hadn't filled out a tax return and then becoming uh, penalty notices for failure to send them off a tax return within the statutory period. I'd already started doing some research about this and I thought, I was thinking, where's my obligation to comply with any of this? And I did some research and I couldn't find any. Meanwhile, we're now in about 2015 and I've started, I've watched uh, the nature of the cage and, and I've started to delve deeply into privacy and a little bit of equity and I've worked out that I'm actually not subject to their rules because I haven't contracted with them. So what I've worked out is that they are offering me a, a contract in the public, in inverted commas, um, whereas I'm a private man who's struggling to make ends meet. So I just wrote to them and when this is early 2015, I just said, excuse me, but why are you writing to me? I'm, I've gone private. I'm working as I wasn't even working. I was just, you know, blagging. I said, I'm just working. If, if I work, I'll be working in the private for compensation as a man being compensated by other men and women. And their response was to write back within about six weeks, cancel all the penalties that the last one had been a thousand pounds. And wow. I have not heard back since. And that was April of 2015. I haven't had a dicky bird back from HMRC. So what do we learn from this? 
What I personally learn is that HMRC work in the public, but if you go private, then you're in two different jurisdictions. When and you say, what they... When you, sorry, when you say pu public, do you mean, because we often hear these mm. terms, commerce... Do they work as in corporation to corporation, contract to contract, that sort of thing? Is yeah, basi basically, mean? they're working with, they're working on presumption, like all the institutions, they're working on the presumption that you are standing under your legal name, your legal fiction, mm -hmm. and that they can right. contract with you. And that um, the legal fiction owes certain obligations, but even the legal fiction um, is not obligated to do anything. It's only obligated to be honest. And my honest position was that I didn't fancy filling out any tax returns. Um, yes. And that was the man making that decision and asking them to, to basically um, show good cause why the man is obligated without a contract. So in a nutshell, all I, all I found, which was something I knew in theory, but I found in practice, that if you do not fill in and sign a tax return, you are not in contract, and if you are not in contract, there is no obligation. Wow. End of. And right. the other thing I would add very hastily, before I forget to add it, is that nobody in the history of planet Earth, in any nation to my knowledge, has ever been prosecuted that did not fill out and sign a tax return. So, in other words, if they have no paperwork, in other words, no evidence of contract, they cannot pursue it. There's nothing to pursue. The judge will say, where is the man or woman's signature? Or they'll probably say, where's the person's signature? Or where's the taxpayer's signature? You only become a taxpayer by consent and by contract. And the, 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 uh, the, the revenue form, if you're filling it in as a, a self-employed person, as I would be, it, it renews every year. So if you've done last year's, but you haven't done this year's, that's the beginning of a new contract. Is that right? Absolutely. When people ask me, David, I owe 10 grand in tax, uh, allegedly, they say, and I say, well, how do you, what makes you say that? Well, I filled out and sent off and completed and, and signed a tax return. Then I just say, well, you're in contract and the honourable thing now to do is to pay it. Subject to Chris's technology which is you've woken up to the fact that there are criminals and you've changed your mind you don't want to operate with criminals so let leave that argument aside for now um because it is a valid argument so i'm just you know let's make the assumption that overnight they become squeaky clean mm. Mm -hmm. uh which is so theoretically hope, possible really. yeah, that's, that's a joke uh, theoretically yeah. possible <laughs> um so th the point is that uh, there's a huge issue here that whichever situation you're in, whether it's council, police, tax, um, education officials, if there is no evidence of contract, then there is no contract. And if there is no contract, there is no obligation. We are only obliged by contract. And if, but, if, it, were, if it were any other way, we would have officially serfdom. We, we do have serfdom, but mm. that's unofficial. But we would but, be in what, we would be in corporate slavery. What what about a rolling contract? It's really it's it's alluding to what you've just said, Richard. So if I had filled in my tax return from last year, and therefore I'm going to get another invitation to fill out another form, is it just not a rolling contract? No, year you've just year? answered your own question because mm. you said another invitation. Each another invitation. year they have to invite you, and uh, each year you have to accept the invitation. What you can do, if you don't believe me, Karen, what you can do, and some very um, resourceful people do this. Fill, that, fill out all the information. Fill it all out correctly, but don't sign it. It's a bit like when you give notice of uh, a, dri a driver identity on a speeding thing. You fill it all out, identify the driver, but you don't sign it. There's nothing they can do with it. Right. Oh, that's very interesting. What about those poor people who are not self-employed uh, or freelance or anything like that who are on PAYE? and uh, feel the same are they then more to go to chris's um uh, idea but well you've got I, to get to the when you see these funny looking glasses you know i've come prepared so let me just <laughs> <laughs> well it's part of the comedy We're show slightly dubious now what that means yeah yeah well 
Let me just read out. I'm, I'm, I'm killing a few birds with one stone here. I'm being a bit cheeky. This, I'm right. reading out uh, an excerpt from my course notes on my, um, my Universal Rights course. Right. Um, this is PAYE situation, which right. will come as a surprise to some people. It, it, it is a grey area, but people need to take the following into account. Employment Rights Act 1996. I'm going to say it twice so people get a, a chance to... I'm mean, on the playback. They can always listen again. Employment Rights Act 1996, Section 13. So I'll repeat that. Employment Rights Act 1996, Section 13 says in subsection 1, an employer shall not make a deduction from wages of a worker employed by him unless A, the deduction is required or authorised to be made by virtue of a statutory provision or a relevant provision of the worker's contract. So let me just stop myself there. In other words, if you're in PAYE situation, check the contract, because that would be the exception in uh, subsection 1A. Um, or ask them to show good cause, what statutory provision are they relying on? And chapter and verse. We, we need to stop allowing so-called figures of authority to operate on presumption and a presumption that makes uh, that works to our prejudice then there's another exception b the worker has previously signified in writing his agreement or consent to the making of the deduction so even if it's not part of the contract the employer has said um, oh i think i've got to make some deductions and has asked the worker to indemnify them with some kind of written consent so um, it goes on to say there are accepted deductions, i.e. deductions that are allowed. In other words, let me stop myself again. What we're okay. looking at here is, is a presumption that deductions are not allowable. And that will come as a shock that, to most people. So just say it again. Yeah. Presumptions that deductions... That deductions by an employer are not allowable unless they have got it written into the contract or written consent agreement from the employee right is that is that one of those um hr things that you've got to go to the human resources i mean this is uh, out of my area of expertise being mm. self-employed mostly all yeah, my life well the human resources pro uh, no they'll probably put give it to the legal department oh, they, right, okay. they will go into panic mode because very few everybody whether it's health education tax whatever money even the value of money we're all operating on presumption that's that's that is what the apocalypse is we're moving from presumption into reality that's what the apocalypse is in a nutshell mm. easy peasy so um, uh, there's so, a question well, Karen yeah, wants to ask. It's really, it's what you're talking about now. Somebody said in their words, what if they enforce your employer to pay through the attachment of earnings? So it's the same, the same solution, what you just said, is it? Uh, yeah, the attachment of earnings. Well, again, that's um, attachment of earnings. They've had to, uh, they've, the employer has had mm. to reveal your personal data to a third party. And so now we have GDPR entering into the equation. And so they need lawful basis because they don't have your explicit consent. Consent. So first of all, check contract, check consent or agreement, check explicit GDPR consent. And then if if um, if all if that, if they if the employer has passed those tests, then start revoking all those things and renegotiate the contract, even if it means going as an independent contractor. Um, and if they don't have those things, then they are put to prove that they have a statutory provision that they are relying on and a lawful basis under GDPR to uh, basically snitch on you and steal from you uh, to, um, to inflate the government's coffers, which, as Chris ro quite rightly points out, this just gives us as motivation. What Chris has uncovered is is sufficient in and of itself but even if people are not ready to fully stand behind that flag then it should motivate them to want to take action in all kinds of other ways that might feel more comfortable mm. because they know that they're dealing with criminals and who wants to deal with a criminal in a way that exactly. prejudices our own interests it's just 
it's a, it's a no-brainer, right. Can I, so, can I just ask you a very quick question here that's come in from Zen Johnson, who says, if we don't fill out the taxation form next year, will the interest earned in a bank cause problems if the bank informs no tax paid in interest? Well, we're back to GDPR. What, what business is it? Right. I've just had a letter from my bank. In fact, I haven't because it was from the alleged accounts review team. No name, no pack drill, no signature, nothing. And I wrote them a letter, um, basically, in a nutshell, I'll just uh, summarise it, um, saying that I appear to have had some kind of communication, but, um, but, but you're expecting me to presume that there's something that you wrote in it, except I can't presume that because nobody's taken responsibility for it. So it looks, it, it has the look and feel of a ransom note. <laughs> because they were telling me that if I didn't comply between now and the 28th of March, they, would, they may have to close my account. And that brings in the Modern Slavery Act 2015, which I was going to mention in other contexts. Criminal exploitation, um, inducing someone to provide a service using threats or force. Now, if the bank um, say that you must provide certain data, otherwise we may have to close your account. That's a Criminal Exploitation Modern Slavery Act 2015, uh, Section 1, Criminal Exploitation, as defined in Section 3, Subsection 5. And, some, uh, and a huge figure in the freedom movement, who I can't name, has already used this to see off HMRC. Wow. We oh, have remedied the legal system, mm -hmm. as um, one of the venerable panel pointed out last week, but I think he did it privately on the chat that we have. Uh, the legal system does, has re does have remedy for virtually everything, but they've hidden that it's not, it takes years of research to uncover it. Right, brilliant. Can, can, I, can I ask uh, one of the questions that somebody's written in is about um, the bailiffs. So can bailiffs or debt collectors um, enforce their way into your home and somebody else said, can we send them down to number 10? And, and <laughs> send them down to number 10, absolutely. Um, who do you want to answer that? Shall we, shall we see if Chris is still with us? Yeah, Chris has had a recent yes, experience uh, <laughs> with, with uh, bailiffs and stuff. Chris, uh, what would... Uh, yes, what they can do lawfully and legally uh, is very different from what they actually do. As right. I discovered to my cost um, 10 days ago, um, I was... Uh, I've been received very briefly i received a um, notice from my landlord saying the fees were going to go up and it went up to a point at which i can't afford it i went on pension uh, 18 years ago and um the pension i receive is not keeping up with the um, costs of rent and everything else so it gets to the point where when it's close to 50 percent of my income i say no i can't afford that Right. However, they ignored that completely. I uh, they issued a Section 21 to get me out, and I put the money for the landlord in a trust on the basis that I would deal with him directly, and he wasn't uh, handing 15% of his income from me to uh, a, a, an estate agent who is a bit of a crook. So basically what happened was that they took me to court and a fake court issued, without hearing my case at all, uh, issued a, um, an order for me to get out, a possession order, and I received the eviction notice and then a bailiff came round, two bailiffs came round on Tuesday week, um, 10 days ago, whenever it was, to evict me. And they said, then when I said no, and I had a few friends here, luckily, they uh, then uh, sent for the police and eventually four policemen turned up. So that was two bailiffs, four policemen and two people from the estate agents. And we again, I argued the fact that, look, this is my home. I paid the money into trust if the landlord wants it. And they paid no attention to that at all. And then eventually the police sergeant gave the order to the um, bailiff to evict me and he came in and he punched me hard in the uh, just under my throat uh, oh my goodness and uh, knocked me down yeah, to the ground appalling. and i had to go to um hospital 
uh, and I still have whiplash um, because of his attack on me. And this is authorized by the police. And uh, they did nothing at all about it except to help him up the stairs to change the locks on my flat and uh, kick me out, is basically, it, while there... I was lying on the floor in the hall. Oh, this um, is that just outrageous. Is there video of this at yes, all? Yes, there is. I, I believe somebody might have sent you a, a copy of it, but um, there is a short video of it, and um, I will make sure that people see the sort of possible stuff that goes on. I've had. And, and what are you going to do about it now, Chris? Now you're Well, I'm back. going to lawyers, and I want to... First of all, uh, a complaint against the sergeant who uh, mm. completely ignored everything and uh, encouraged, having said that he was there to prevent injury, one minute later, he actually encouraged the guy to barge through. Now, in, he may not have known that he was going to punch me, but he certainly did and uh, knocked me to the floor and they all left me there on the floor for nearly two hours, well, they left before um, I was still on the floor, before the um, ambulance came. It was a very painful experience. So what happens in reality is not can, necessarily you, lawful. Can I just ask, were they bailiffs, as in court bailiffs, or enforcement officers, which I understand there is a big difference between the two? He was a genuine court uh, bailiff. Right. So, oh, they, so both, that, they both were. Yeah. So it, the difference between those is that the court bailiffs have more power. Is that correct? Than Well, I believe um, so. And again, uh, they have to follow the law and they don't. Right, well, and, uh, they don't have the power to go and punch somebody in the throat. No, absolutely. That is uh, that is appalling. Now, I mean, it's good that you told us uh, this story. Of course, it um, may well put people off challenging. Mm. That's the, that is one of the things, because in a law abiding world if somebody believes that somebody's acting unlawfully or illegally however you wish to define it if everyone's playing the game then at least everything can be civil but if you've got thugs that are prepared to mm. take physical violence um and and punch a, a gentleman in his i think you're you're above the big 7 -0. I'm um, 78, actually, yes. Well, there we go. I mean, that's just... As a pensioner, you know. it's, it's just evil, isn't it? That That's a problem. I think, I think you know, our police force have a lot to answer for. Not all of them no. are bad guys, but I think some people, when they put a uniform on, it, it gives them this power. It doesn't have to just be a police uniform. It's all sorts of people in a uniform. They hide behind it. But it, this is a very so intimidating, and I, obviously it does put a lot of people off from, from taking it to the next step. But, you know, you are a warrior, and, and my hat goes off to you, but we also need to, to hear the outcome of this when you do... I mean, are you going to pursue that that particular officer? Absolutely. I'm in touch with um, a legal firm to well, have written to the chief constable asking uh, for a, um, uh, well, uh, a, compl a formal complaint about his behaviour, basically. And uh, uh, we'll see how that goes. I've also reported it as a crime, but they refused to even report it as a crime. And th th again... What? Sussex police really are um, corrupt to the, you know, completely. I've had 20, nearly 10, 12 years with Sussex, with Sussex police, refusing every single one of my crime reports. Mm. Um, and this is just another. And so um, they said, for instance, they passed the papers. I reported it. I reported um assault, battery, and trespass, and uh, the administrator who responded to it then uh, sent the papers to the sergeant who committed the offences. And I just, you know, and, and refused to put it down as a crime report. So, And, and I think it is important to, to highlight these individuals, isn't it? Rather than the actual police force, we need to pin down these, these individuals that are, that are doing this. And, I, and I will, I've, talk, I've got all the names and so mm. on. I will talk through with the solicitors to see how we can present this properly. Yeah, this is oh, it's just... And it, this is quite a, a contradict contradictory question, maybe. I mean, is he a British police officer? Is he, you know, English-speaking? Oh, yes. All right, okay. I'm just wondering because so many people are coming into our country now. I'm just wondering if they're going to be putting uniforms on soon and what they're going to be up no, to. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Okay.
Well, uh, that is quite a, um, Shocker. a a shocking story. But um, the thing is, we that if we don't hear these stories and we learn about the corruption of the police, mm. we still will hold the, the view that the police are on our side. The more we realise actually that they are corrupt and they're prepared prepared to aid and abet, you know, however many of the... I mean, when, when they came for my van with an enforcement officer, they came within 90 seconds, three policemen in three squad cars parked aggressively. You know how they can yeah. sort of just yeah, pull up and park in. in the road? Parked aggressively as if I had pulled a gun or a knife out on the... Imba- and it's just that I said, well, he just said, I'm going to call the police if you don't pay. And I said, well, call the police. And within... I said, they were there. They must have been briefed. You yeah. know, they must have been briefed beforehand that I'm going to this bloke's house and I, I, I might need yeah. some backup. Yep. And, yeah. you know, you just think this is outrageous. How how we got any more? Qu- I mean, we've got yeah, some- we ha- we've got quite a few. I mean, I think two of them can be joined together. So it's talking about CGD, what? capital gains tax, ah, yeah. and stamp duty and VAT, value added tax. Where do all these things go? So somebody at the very beginning, they say, what about CGT? With with this, you know, these, these laws, I think David was talking about. And the trusts. Um, can people put the, the capital gains in a trust? Is there a way out of that? And, you know, all these other taxes, the stamp duty, and where does the VAT go? Who can I very to... quickly, uh, yeah. Karen, just add that basically the form that we've got on the website covers all 230 sources of income into the government. That includes capital gains tax. It includes parking fees, parking fines, uh, stamp duty, all the taxes in this country, any money that goes to the government whatsoever or property, money or property, is a criminal offence under both the Terrorism Act 2000 and the International Criminal Court Act 2001. Could you just give us your um, your website address because people might be joining all the time mm. and we'll put yes, them in okay. at it's, the end. Um, there are two websites. One is Probity. Probityco.org. That's probityco.org. Uh, and probityco.com. And the dot com is for businesses, and the dot co uh, org is for individuals. Fantastic. Okay. Yeah. David, did you want to add uh, to that? Oh, very much so. I wanted to address <laughs> Karen's original question is about, uh, about what happens when so-called enforcement agents visit and yes. what rights what rights do they have well the short answer is almost none none right none, none. because they're third party interlopers because they've because got no it's your, authority be, because it's your home it's your we, we operate the castle principle if you open the door that gives them that's an invitation for them to come in so why would you open the door? If you need to speak to them, and why would you? You, are, uh, you speak to them through an open window. Yes. Now, before I give a bit more detail, I, I, I feel another story coming on. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> get, your, again, get, your, get your hats and your sleeping coats yeah, on. Yeah. Get the cocoa on. <laughs> again, this is a real-life anecdote, because that's all I can use is my own experience. Absolutely. Uh, now, so I've done the 2015 HMRC escapade, and then two years later, maybe three, no, two. So we're in 2017, and I'm challenging now utilities. And they're threatening uh, to get a warrant to fit a prepayment meter. So what I'm doing is I'm feeling the fear and the dread and the anxiety, but going through the motions, because I know I've already started teaching this technology, so I need to go through it myself so that I can teach people what happens next and how to deal with it. Anyway, long story short, because I know we've only got two hours. um, (laughs) Thanks. uh, Appreciate it. Long story short, (laughs) on the third or fourth visit, uh, three gas agents, uh, one locksmith, and two police officers, at least, are at the door. Um, and, but by then, I've, I've rehearsed my script. I know, I, know, I know the deal. So, first of all, you keep the door shut and you start with the police. Excusez-moi, monsieur or madame constable or officer, whichever, delete where applicable. Um, are you here to keep the peace? Oh, yes, of course we are. Well... 
What breach of the peace do you have evidence of or do you anticipate? I'm a peaceful man in his own home. Silence. If they, if they don't go upon, uh, upon that question, then here's the next one. Right. Are you familiar with Section 26 of the Criminal Justice and Courts Act 2015? It's interesting how the most protective legislation came out in 2015. I'll repeat that. Section 26, Criminal Justice and Courts Act 2015. Abuse of position by constable. Summarizing it and praising it, a constable cannot th uh, threaten to arrest a peaceful man or woman with no good cause, or fail to arrest a combatant agent, because if they do, and if there is evidence of that, so you'd need some camera work and video work, or at least one other reliable witness, they can go down for up to 14 years. Ooh. Blimey. What would you call a competent agent? <laughs> a co Is this a joke? <laughs> oh, a no, no, because you, you, you said to not arrest or mm. a competent agent, and I just wondered what you meant by that. Oh, no, I, I, maybe I misspoke. I didn't mean to say competent agent. I meant, um, no, it's the, the, the agent has turned up, um, usually with a fake warrant, because there's no such thing... The exceptions to what I've just said, uh, legitimate entry, but even then only with reasonable force, and re a force will never be reasonable if there's a human being behind the door, because that's a health and safety issue. Yeah, so we, see, we see these videos mm. with them with these great big compactor mm. things that, that smash the door, and there's people inside the house saying, you know, vulnerable person, vulnerable mm. person, and they're no, on video. I, well, I, I hear you, Richard, but I think most of those are, are um, filmed by actors. I don't believe that, you know, that uh, the, the human, the, what they call it, the human barricade um, can't fail, but you have to hold your nerve. You have to hold your nerve. Um, worst case scenario, if you are a targeted individual and have, and they've got a poster of you on the, uh, in one of the offices of the police station and they throw darts at it, then mm. they'll throw away the rule book and, yes, they may well uh, batter their way in. But let, I'm only talking about the average Joe or yeah. Jill. They're not... I mean, at that, that time, eight, nine years ago, I, I was completely unknown. They had no reason to target me. So when I was peaceful and rational and gave them their rules and they listen because they have to listen, they backed off. So the police went within microseconds. They just said to each other, and I heard them say, oh, this is a civil matter, we don't need to stay. And as soon as the police go, the agents lose heart because they need the police there to intimidate you. It's all smoke and mirrors. 99% of the time, it's smoke and mirrors, and they rely on your fear and ignorance to gain access. Now, there are exceptions. Like I said, one of them is if you're a targeted individual, they will routinely break the law and, and hope that their Masonic friends can save them round the back. But there are some legitimate exceptions. If a legitimate bailiff with a high court writ um, attempts entry, that will be lawful in most situations. So that's lawful repossession. Similarly, a landlord repossessing with a county court writ. And the third exception is a gas agent with a legitimate warrant for a health and safety gas leak repair jobby. So just to sum up, it's basically repossession cases, legitimate repossession cases, and if they're not legitimate, you can question the paperwork, but that's another day's work, and legitimate gas leak. Not alleged gas leak, mm. actual gas leak. One but that you apart from those three exceptions... Yeah. I can pr you can prove it's a gas leak by striking a match, can't you, presumably? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's one answer. Is that a solution? What, so what about... I'm, I'm just here to say that, yes, there are um, targeted individuals that do get their doors battered down, but they are in massively the exception. They are not the rule. Police right. will not routinely batter a door down because their credibility will be shot to pieces. It already is, if you're in the well, know, but yes. the, the mainstream so, will... So, you know the video that was floating around? We did talk about this last week. There was a lady, apparently she had four-stage cancer, and, and they, you know, the officers came, and the debt collectors came, 
I don't know what the end story was. I don't know if she was one of, you know, a, a crisis actor. I don't, I don't know. But you know about that story? Because that was going out to a lot of channels and it's very disturbing, obviously, it's... for her. But if it's genuine, because this does happen and that's what people are frightened of. I think, you know, so, we, we're told uh, the all thing, this. Yes. But... The thing is that it's a numbers game. The, the fewer of us that do this without the fear, the more chances we have ultimately of uh, seeing off the enemy. This is a war. You cannot fight a war without some degree of fear or anxiety. Well, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, please um, grow up. But I think I mean, I, that's what I had to do. Grow, growing up is easy to say, isn't it? But, you know, we are. Yeah, no, no, but I'm only to... saying that because I felt the fear and anxiety and I knew that I had to see it through anyway. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I hear you. And, and, I, and I think it's great if we can all grow up. But I think we need to protect ourselves. And we were talking about it last week about being on the battlefield, because rightly so, we are at war. But you have to prepare. You have to get your tools. And I think putting your stuff into trusts is really key because then you don't own them, you know. And then I, I, I believe I don't know enough about it, but I want to learn more about it. Because I think that is the answer, as, as, as Chris has been saying, you know, put well, everything that you own in trusts. Well, allow me to say that it is mm. an answer rather than the answer. Yeah. As three, the three guys that were on the panel last week were at pains to say, the remedy is internal, it's inside here. Yeah. My remedy arrived when I had the, the gumption to stand up to the police and the agents from behind a closed, locked door. That was my remedy. Yes, it helped that I knew their rules. They operate by a rule book and I knew their rules. So the two things that people have to do <clears throat> are be bold and learn some of the rules that are at play here. Mm -hmm. If you're not bold and if you're not prepared to learn the rules that are at play, what are you doing? Are you hiding behind somebody else's remedy? Are you hiding behind the easy quick fix? Do you go to the doctor with symptoms and ask the doctor to fix you? I'm deliberately being controversial here because we, as a, hum, as a human species, we are being called to grow up because if we don't, we will get what is coming to us. Mm. The well, education system mm. infantilized us and we have to uh, push back against that infantilization process. No, I, t I mean, I do absolutely agree because we've given so much responsibility mm. away. People are so used to now saying, oh, uh, can you fix it? Or mm. where do I get a template from? And I just fill in this form and they don't understand the process. And it, I mean, I've been on the channel here uh, Tea has just arrived. The lovely Julia. Oh, has, the lovely uh, Julia. Hello, lovely Julia. Tea. Thank you. Do come and wave at the. <laughs> at yes, the come and say hi. Sorry about that. Uh, tea for David oh. and Chris. M mine's a green tea, Julia. <laughs> <laughs> green tea for David, he says. Um, uh, can I just but, say that, um, that out there, there are some very noble, brave warriors who are prepared to give as good as they get. Yes. But things get complicated when you find out that, A, they haven't done anything, and you inquire and find out that, in fact, their spouse or their parents or their children or their lodger or somebody who's breathing down their necks hasn't got the same gumption or isn't on the same page, and it gets very fraught and complicated. So yeah. what I just said, which may sound harsh to some ears, I don't mean it um, across the board. I'm, I'm, I'm addressing those people who are, who are not restricted by those, anyone breathing down their necks. I wasn't. I was, I was on yeah. my own, so I could be as brave as my own um, system allowed me to be. And yes. that's easier. And that is easier. It is, I mean, it is a problem if you're trying to do something like push against the council tax and your wife or your mm. husband is saying, no, no, don't rock the boat. We, you know, I'm, I can't sleep at night. And I know somebody who's been trying to do that, but his uh, other half was not happy. And, and in the end, they've sort of had to collapse. And, and, and until both parties mm. are in agreement, if you're in that situation, but as you say, if you're on your own... Uh, but you've got mates to turn up at the last minute if things go a bit pear-shaped, or people to ask. Presumably, you want to get in that situation, you want to be away from that situation where it's gone to court, there's summonses, there's enforcement officers and all of that. 
by getting your paperwork sorted out. Mm. I, this is what I hear all the time, that the paperwork, you know, do it honourably as much as you can with, like, Chris's um, system, that you're, you're putting the onus on the government to prove that they are being honourable and not using your money for terrorism of the murder of men, women and children mm. innocently wherever they happen to be. Well, what, what I teach, uh, Richard, amongst other things, is how to be empowered using the power of the pen. Brilliant. Not mightier than the sword. Yeah. The problem that I come across is the, is the lack of self-confidence. People don't think they can read. They don't think they can read my notes. They don't think they can interpret, interpret them correctly and then apply them. Um, so they kind of give up. Uh, but if they persevere, which many do persevere, many do, many don't, but many do, then they find that there is remedy as long as you comprehend who you are, what the, what the game is, and how to play to win, because it can be done. And you can prevent the visit. I'll give you a quick example. There's lots of examples I could give you, but a quick example would be a notice to the CEO of any um, dodgy corporation uh, written to that man doing business as the status, the CEO, and giving them notice of uh, liability, notice of harm, notice of trespass, notice of liability, especially if they're sending out agents to bully you. Mm. So just go straight to the uh, go straight to the head of the beast. But I think again, somebody... you have to know how to write these letters or notices. <laughs> they're actually notices. Somebody, I think last week we were talking about making people, rather than going for the corporations themselves, but making the people within the corporations the ones that are mm. personally liable. Once you've told them that you know they're doing something wrong, you've put them on notice, as David has just said. Be because well, that's it's all education, that's why isn't they it? Went, can I just say that's why mm. they went corporate, because they wanted to put themselves out of range to hide behind the corporate veil, the veil that separates the living and the dead. That's all they wanted to do. Yeah. So what you have to do is peek behind that veil, find the name of the man or woman, and write to them as a man or woman in blue ink, uh, signed in blue, on the right, not the left, you know, on the creditor's side. These are the tricks of the trade that I teach mm. on my course. And right. there are other, this is just one uh, trick, if that's even the right word. There are many, 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 many others. Uh, um, relying in particular on the power of the question. And um, just as we said to Chris, give us your um, web address or wherever your course is so people can check it yeah, out. Yeah, they're asking, they, aren't they? Yeah, A lot of be... people are asking. We can put it on the description at the end. We yeah. can do that. Uh, all the W's dot the people's lawyer. So people's plural. The people's lawyer UK, because there is an American, uh, the people's lawyer. The people's lawyer UK dot com brilliant and, and also david you you do travel don't you you and as chris i think you you do run workshops if there's if, if you know somebody can gather enough people together you'll come along and do workshops and talk to people in the flesh is that correct you still doing that I, absolutely I, I cannot not do that because if you're genuine my i have a simple yardstick whoever is in the freedom movement touting truth if i haven't met them then they're not touting truth for me <laughs> right, fair enough. I've met uh, Chris, he's touting truth. I've met you guys, you're touting truth. But the, um, obviously I can't mention names, but there are certain mm. famous freedom uh, mm. warriors who I haven't, I wouldn't, rec well, I would recognise them obviously, but I haven't, you know, I've either not met them at all or I've, I've met them in strange circumstances and I haven't been able to get close to them. That, to me, that sets off um, alarm bells. Um, what was the other thing I was going to say? Um, oh, it's gone from my head. Anyway, can, can um, I can I just ask one thing here, or somebody? Well, actually, it's my question. You said um, about two two thousand and fifteen. You said these these some some um, new laws had come in. You said interestingly in two thousand and fifteen, as though had, that has some bearing. You look confused now, so you can't remember it. Did, no. Well, no, it was the Modern oh, was Slavery Act 2015, criminal oh. exploitation, which is the closest that we come to um, criminal coercion, in okay. my opinion. Okay. And the Cr Criminal Justice and Courts Act 2015 that made it that made constables who misbehave liable to imprisonment of up to 14 years. That sounds like good news. 
Yeah. And the other thing that I wanted to add, I remembered what I wanted to say before I forgot it, was tomorrow, um, in terms of take, taking myself out to the people, I'm in uh, Shoreham by the Sea near Brighton, um, uh, in a live gig at the Royal George at uh, starting two o'clock. And the following Sunday, oh, Rich, Richard knows about this one. He's in it himself. Me, Richard, John O'Looney, and Carly Spell are in a, uh, a gig in near Burnley, Sunday the 24th of March. Should be good fun. Busy, busy. Yeah, um, and that's one of the things that I do have to say. I do like doing these live things because yeah. A, people can come up to you and they ask you questions. It's only sometimes when you're rushed and you. we did one at uh, the um, Leicester Square Theatre, which was great fun to be able to say, you know, the West End, I've tried oh, the West End <laughs> boards, the don't you know. <laughs> uh, but they rushed us out and, and it felt awful because people wanted to ask questions and you're going, I'm really sorry, we've yeah. got to go. And it sounded like, you know, you were some superstar going, I'm so sorry, I can't answer your question, please. <laughs> leave me alone and that's the last <laughs> thing uh, the th you know because i do want people to you know interact with you yeah and know that mm. what that we're genuine people trying to do our best as much as we can there's there's another question for but, for david keeps coming up or oh, sorry is that chris, chris? yeah chris, yeah so i just you. wondered if i could go back on one of the questions um it was about uh, people paying paye and in national insurance and having it uh, deducted from their salaries and wages uh we are Unfortunately, in this country, about 80 to 85 percent of taxes come through corporations and businesses. And so if we are really going to have an effect, we're going to have to start to really ensure that the businesses understand the criminal offenses that their directors are committing every time they take money away from uh, an individual's salary and wages or wages and uh, hand it to the revenue and customs. That is a serious criminal offence of conduct and salary to genocide under the International Criminal Court Act, Section 52. And they can be put in prison for up to 30 years for that offence. Um, the other one is this, the Terrorism Act 2000. It is a criminal offence under sections 15 and 17 of the Terrorism Act 2000 to hand money to somebody else or to ask for money or to collect the money and then hand it to the government. It's a criminal offence of um, terrorism, ter uh, sorry, funding terrorism. Right. So both of those are important things you can do. So what you need to do if you are PAYE and national insurance is to write to your bosses, your employer, and tell them about this. They need to know about these laws. They don't know it. They need to know that they are personally liable for criminal activities. And they can't, they're not covered by civil law and the... Um, the methods that have been used uh, for the medical genocides and other things that are going on right mm. now. So they can be prosecuted and sent to prison as company directors. I know one large company, for instance, that pays 760 million pounds in taxes in a year. Wow. And that's a lot of money. And yeah. it, uh, the, the directors need to be aware that 70 six million of that is going towards mass murder and genocide so there's a lot i mean there's a lot then that people can do is by mm. notifying their employers that this is going on and um absolutely and, and, and yeah. you can download a form for the employer to set up a trust on behalf of all the employees and right. keep mm. the money away mm. from the government until the last day of the financial year and on the first day of the next financial year, they can pay the money, the PAYE and national insurance, back to the individual employees that they took it from. Oh, right. Presumably they can earn interest on that during mm. that year. Indeed. Um, uh, so it's about educating people, isn't it, more than anything? Because a lot of the people in the system don't actually know this. Yes. You know, they're, they're just being sort of led astray like we are. They're just following rules. And we never, we never, we're never taught about tax Absolutely and, not. and finances and, and corporations. Why is that? Know. Um, well, mm, I think that's I to wonder. take advantage mm. of us. I've got a question here for Dave. Mm. It says, what happens when you make thousands, when you cash out your Bitcoin 
and the exchange informs the HMRC. Do you deal with the HMRC wanting the tax, and do you say it's a private transaction? If it is a private transaction, that's what you say. There we go. Thank you very much. Nice, and, <laughs> nice and easy answer. That's what we like. Or, or we even go. better, ask yeah. them to, to, to prove that it's not a private transaction and that, uh, that they were a party to the contract. Yeah. Yeah, that's, it. that's good. very good. The, the answers all seem to be the same, really, don't they? I mean, you just need to tell them. You need to fill out forms and, and, and tell them whether it is the, uh, the, the VAT or the stamp duty um, because... Can, I was just going to... Sorry it, to interrupt. But you, when you say fill out forms, there's an alarm bell in my mind thinking that somewhere I've been told if you fill out their form, you are effectively oh, giving so, yeah. jurisdiction. No, I didn't mean their forms. I mean going on to these guys, go on to the Clever Clogs website, oh, right. yeah, yeah, and follow their notices, aren't they, more yeah. than anything. So it's education. And and I think it's it's not one one size fits all by any means, but the 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 ethos behind it is educating, telling people, you know, I'm not complying, I'm saying no because, you know, I'm not in in that system, I'm not in the commercial system, I'm not in the corporate world. So it, it seems quite simple, but it does mean a lot of work. Or no, it, it's actually it's a very delicate tightrope uh, tightrope yeah. to walk, um, and I would never uh, give. Uh, I don't give advice anyway, none of us do, but yeah. um, people really have to know who they are and who and what they're dealing with before they commit to any course of conduct or, or, or behaviour pattern. Um, and, and that requires some study and some due diligence and some perseverance. Mistakes, mishaps will happen along the way, um, but be prepared. You know, it's not a GCSE. It's, there's no pass or fail. And the overriding philosophy that I teach is, would you, be, would you rather be right or happy? So if you'd rather be happy and you're in, of the nervous disposition or surrounded by the congenitally conformist, don't do anything. Yeah, if you'd rather be happy. But if you'd rather be right and you've got the bravery, then crack on. You know, but all along, you have to keep te quizzing yourself. Am I okay? Is, does this feel right? Mm. You know, and um, know the tricks that they pull. And they have an infinite number of tricks. It's incredible how many tricks mm. they've got. Mm. So we are no, uh, an, an hour in. Sorry, Chris. I just, uh, uh, just, just let it be. No, quick, go on. A quick point. Um, it is helped if you get a lot of other people joining. Now, yesterday, I think it was a new organization set up for the Palestine Liberation Movement called No Tax for Genocide is asking 100,000 people to sign up to say they will not pay tax for criminal offenses in this country. Now, if we get 100,000 people there all together refusing tax, that's when we can have a big effect. Yeah, no, I think it gives Sorry. people confidence. Yes, I absolutely agree. And, and of course, it t does send a message straight to the government that the people are not putting up with this That's nonsense. right. Because yeah. we, I can, mean, they, can... they, they come on the telly, not that I have a telly, but people send me the clips. The links, yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, Sunak will suddenly proudly say, I'm sending this many millions to mm. some war zone. And he's not asked the people no. if that's what they want. And, it's, and then HMRC and the enforcement team are saying we're going to extract that money from you so that we can send it to this war zone. Yes. And we didn't even choose him to be our leader in the first place. And yeah, we? he's got no mandate no. to begin with. And we it's, it's somehow we just put up with he's this there. and go, oh, oh, well, well, you know, yeah. what's <laughs> on the Coronation Street? 7.30 on a Friday. Oh, is it? <laughs> I don't know. Um, can I just come in here? Because you know we had a little thing about competent. We thought David said competent. Yes. And it wasn't. It was combatant, apparently. Oh, combatant. Oh, yes. Yeah, so my, somebody's just brought sorry, that up. Thank you for correcting my... Uh, um, Julia Thingy often jig. says that uh, um, my ears can, are... Uh, yeah, please Can do. I just come in on the last point that Chris made? Um, I have very mixed feelings about people unifying... On the one hand, I celebrate it. You know, when they come together, it's something to celebrate. But I always have a feeling that, especially when government officials are now saying that anyone who doesn't, I'm paraphrasing, anyone who doesn't toe the government line is going to be labeled extremist. 
And it's far easier to dismiss an entire group as extremist than it is, you know, a group with 100,000 in it is far easier to dismiss than 100,000 individuals quietly yes. working together. Yeah, no, I see that point. I think that's, um, oh, hang on, which camera are we on? There we go. Um, absolutely, I can see that point. So it, it, there's, there's pros and cons, clearly, to both things. Um, but it's, it, that's a very good point. There's a question here, which uh, I'm just trying to get up on the screen. Hang on, I've got to move what, it over the, here. The appeals one? Uh, it says, uh, I don't think cashing in Bitcoin on the exchange is a private transaction. How would you get out of paying thousands to HMRC to fund the killing? How would you get out of it? Well, that well, would I be... That's what, that's what yeah, we've been then saying. You back mm. into, you're back into trust. You know, you were... You were Really, yeah. it, it had to be it, it had to be a trustee under a trust pulling the strings and the the profits go into the trust and it can't be touched because it's for the bene it's for the benefit of a beneficiary in a, under a private trust. So that would be the workaround. But it's a workaround in advance, not in arrears. Yes. And I'm, I'm aiming at some point I did just before Christmas have somebody who was going to talk about private trusts to, to be able to put stuff into it so that. Everything is, you know, it's that old thing. Yeah. You, you own nothing and be happy. But yeah. actually the trust owns it, but nobody can see who the yeah. trust members are. Uh, but unfortunately, the lady who um, was going to come on the show had uh, a problem, p personal problem, which I can't talk about, um, uh, mainly because she didn't tell me. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> sounded, sounded more dramatic that way. Yeah. Um, but she said she add one she, thing, please, Richard? Yes, please. Uh, on the Bitcoin issue, um, it is just as much a criminal offence to pay tax to the government in relation to Bitcoin um, transactions, as it is for any other uh, right, because you're still funding. The so uh, use it and put it put the money they're demanding into trust and don't um, fill in the forms, as David said. You must yeah. not fill in their forms. And somebody has said how to form a trust. So will we be able to get this information from your websites, which we will put in the description. People keep asking for your websites, but we'll put them in the description yes. um, at the end. Yeah, so, very and, quickly. And... Um, a trust document is actually very simple in this country. You can write it on the back of an envelope if you write the right words and you appoint it yourself as trustee or somebody else as trustee. It can be as simple as that. But what we've done is to put a comprehensive uh, trust document that anybody can download and just fill it in. Mm. Don't make too many changes to it um, because it is quite deliberately worded in the way that it is in order to make it secure and genuine trust document. And once you have signed and witnessed it, you have got your trust. That's very interesting because you can go to places and they'll mm. charge you a couple of thousand yeah. pounds to set this up. And effectively what you're saying is it's certain words on a page and it's just that knowledge you're paying for. But, but, but maybe we can get um, Chris to come on on the show. Uh, and once, talk about yeah, it. once you've remedied the situation you're in, we can have you talk about that, but then also talk about uh, how you set up a trust yourselves. But, and, and also on the back of that, though, when you, OK, so, I mean, that sounds great and simple, which is, is, is brilliant. But surely that information, that trust has to be sent somewhere. So those that are after us need to know that we're in a trust and they can't come banging on our door. Well, yes, uh, I mean, it's important, but don't send that trust document. That is your trustees. But a copy of it. Instructions. Send a copy to any uh, body who is oh. questioning why you haven't paid them. Or you can send it to absolutely everybody anyway, can't you? All, all the uh, companies, yeah, the utilities, the DVLA, the whole or, lot. Um, the Do a nice mail shop. Customs, the oh. DVLA, the council, they're all included in the wording in the trust document. And all right. they need is a copy of the trust conditions so that they yeah. know they can get the money if they meet your conditions. Right. And if they don't, they have no right to get right to it at all. Yeah. And, and what about a limited company? So, like we were talking about cars last week. If if you've got a um, a penalty for speeding or, or something like that, or parking, can you put the car into a limited company and then you have the same rights as a trust if they want to come and get it? As they might. I'm they not do, sure about that. Answer. Uh, maybe David okay. does know that. David, are you there? Uh, well, the limited company, if it owns the car, will will have <clears throat> will give you a, an 
will give you a layer of protection, um, but the limited company ultimately is registered to the government, therefore ultimately owned by the government, so um, a certain amount of chaos can ensue. If the limited company's uh, registered address is miles away from you, then that's one pot uh, potential remedy because they'll be chasing shadows, won't they? Mm. It's all about uh, giving out information that will serve you and will make their job as difficult as possible. So we have to be, um, we have to box clever. You know, we were, we were dragged up at school to answer questions faithfully, fill out forms, yes, madam, yes, sir, yes, miss, uh, but this is the last thing that we should be doing. We should always have one eye on the consequences of compliance. If the consequences of compliance don't seem favorable, then we need to find another route or another remedy. You know, that, that's a just simple, mm. simple common sense, really. But whilst you're there, there's a question. Is the uh, Exchequer grants supposed to go to private limited businesses? I don't, I'm not quite sure what that means, the ex mm. Exchequer grants. What is an Exchequer grants? Maybe the questioner can tell us. That's Nikki Baxter has asked that question. Um, not, that's not my remit. I deal with my, ordinary no. people with ordinary issues, and Exchequer grants is above my pay grade. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, what about, can, can you put a house with a mortgage in a trust? So if your house has got a mortgage to it, can that go in a trust? Or is there a third party that's interested in it? Uh, you, you can put the, the difference between the mortgage and the value into mm. the trust. Yeah, so if the value is 200K and there's 100K left to pay on the mortgage, then in effect you're putting the 100K into the trust. Mm. Can I, uh, just changing the subject just briefly, um, if you've got, say you're um, in a partnership with somebody or you, you know, you're married or whatever and you have a, a property with a mortgage on but you have debts that accrue, can they be put onto the mortgage or onto the house value? And, and if it's come from one of the p people, like the... One partner. One partner, whichever one it is, are you able to separate yourself from that debt if it's put onto against the house? I think that's called a lien or something. Mm. Is it? Well, that's, those, there's several questions um, wrapped inside that question. Um, Sorry about that. If, no, that's all right. <clears throat> if the, uh, again, always chercher le contract. If the contract was, was, did not place any security on your property, then you are home free. Then it's an unsecured debt, and then we're just talking about pesky visits eventually, unless you do the paperwork, or maybe a black mark on your credit rating. Uh, but if it is, if there is, a, you know, like a loan, a secured loan or, or a mortgage, then it gets very fraught and you have to tread very carefully. And um, I wouldn't rely on the advice of anyone, to be honest. I mean, literally mm. no one. Just um, do your own due diligence, see what you come up with. If it's a shared property, then uh, if the uh, then essentially uh, simplifying things, yes, your uh, uh, person A's debt is in effect also person B's debt. It can be a bit more complicated than that, but essentially that is you have that potential. Yes, if it's uh, if it's a shared, uh, you know, joint. There's joint and there's joint and several. So it's it gets complicated, but yeah, okay. just be aware that. Um, that when there are two parties uh, uh, that own a property, it, uh, one's debts can mm. affect the other, yes. As long as it's a secured, secured debt, yeah. So T, T. Crooks, <laughs> interesting name. Um, I um, says, just bring a quick point up. Yeah. You mentioned the word several there. Most people understand that as being a lot of people, several people, for instance. But yes. in fact, it means individual. Does it? Yeah, in legalese. Yes. Ah, yeah, ah, good, I didn't good, know that. good, 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 mm. good point. Because joint, joint and several means that um, that you maintain your individuality within that arrangement. Yeah. Well, thanks for that uh, uh, clarity there. That's that's fascinating. That is, yeah, it's interesting. All these words, hidden hidden meanings of words. Um, I was going to say, where's Mr. Crooks gone or Mrs. Crooks? Putting a car in trust name doesn't work anymore apparently 
but the, it is from T. Crook, so I don't know. Maybe <laughs> maybe Mr. or Mrs. Crook can, can follow that up. And is it, I mean, that's the thing, when you get a statement <laughs> like that, is it because it doesn't it didn't work for them or yeah. they didn't do it correctly? Yeah, um, or is it something else? Or is it that, da, you da, know. Da. Um, there's, yeah. there's a question here, I think, from Sheena, who says, if your compliance results in your enslavement, then can you refuse to comply by law? Uh, <laughs> that's a very interesting... Um, mm, is, uh, yeah, well, if compliance results in your enslavement, uh, it's potentially a very complicated answer to that one, and we need to simplify it. Um, if compliance did result in your enslavement, then you accept that... Com you accept to do what you're being asked to do upon conditions. And whoever asked that question, I think, has a good idea of what conditions they should be asking. Yeah. Um, upon proof that it would not compromise my uh, lawful universal rights, that it would uh, it'd be in accord with the human rights legislation, European Convention, uh, UN conventions, uh, natural, God-given, uh, unalienable rights, etc., etc., and it's something that I did men meant to mention, which is the power of the conditional acceptance. If all else fails, one when, during the COVID hysteria, a lot of people um, looked me up and asked me for a remedy for all these ridiculous um, requirements like masks and jabs. And I said, "Well, just accept them upon conditions. Right. And if you draft the conditions appropriately, and every single person that you took that." advice in inverted commas uh, mm. was successful uh, it was it was dropped because they they can't meet the conditions therefore it relieves you of all potential obligation or requirement and requirement only means request in legalese anyway oh, can i add one thing to that uh, david cool. it's very useful to use the word revocable as well um, because we assume that once we've made an agreement, it goes on forever. But in making that agreement, you can put a date at which it will be revoked if you find that the consequences of your actions are not beneficial to you. So make sure you put in a revocable uh, phrase or a criterion into the agreement. That's a That's very, good. very, very good. Yeah. Can I just add that some people do that by adding something like errors and omissions accepted, which means that leaves you wriggle room to one day in the future say, um, I got something wrong. I omitted something or I'm, I made an error. And yep. some people add all uh, unalienable rights reserved. There's many, there's, there's many ways that you can cover that base. But yeah, I agree with Chris. Yeah. Here's a good question um, about trusts. Somebody has said, should should they or should we avoid using a solicitor to set up a trust? Yes. A standard solicitor. Yes. You sure about that, David? Um, uh, absolutely. I, I didn't quit the law four, four decades ago for no reason. And we should avoid uh, the following people in no particular order of evil. Solicitors, barristers, um, uh, police officers uh, with strange looks in their eyes, um, <laughs> accountants, uh, doctors, nurses, dentists. School These teachers. are people and Thanks. teachers. <laughs> These people need to be avoided uh, until kingdom come. Yeah. Well, there you go. Uh, Gosh. So, um, that's a, that's a very long list, isn't yeah. it? Uh, and probably YouTube presenters, I should imagine. Actually, well. it's a very short list. <laughs> I've got a much longer one. All right. Um, I've got a question here. Uh, it's saying, having overpaid £9,000 in tax on a pension drawdown, tax office has sat on it for over six months while I struggle to pay bills. How do I challenge this? Am I pay, am paying overdraft interest while waiting? Well, if I can jump in, this is a, this is a clear section 173 um, brackets, three brackets, Data Protection Act 2018, concealing access, blocking concealing access to information relating to personal data. You need access to this data, which is in effect digits, which is in effect funds, uh, and they have no lawful reason to block access to it. So 
they're committing a criminal offence, but you have to put them on notice of that. Section 173, subsection 3, Data Protection Act 2018. There you go. And you if, you, if, you, if you missed that, timestamp <laughs> this now. Go back and, and write it down afterwards. Uh, that's what we all have to do, isn't it, with these YouTube channels? This is uh, going very well. We are uh, one hour and 20 minutes into yeah. the show with 40 minutes left. Um, I hope people are finding this week's show very different from mm -hmm. last week's show. We had a lot of philosophy on last mm -hmm. week's show, didn't we? Mm -hmm. We, we which, did, not which so many was questions. Very, but, and, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, um, and people were a little frustrated with that. But I think that was important, really, to set, set where we are, because I think just going in yeah. and expecting yeah. answers like that. Well, Dave has got the thumbs up there, and it is because you, you have to... This is all about being sovereign and the spiritual aspect of it again, isn't it? You have to really trust yourself in this. You know, there's no guru, there's no teacher, there's no leader. We have to do the work ourselves, but with awareness and with the correct information. And that does mean work. So we have to not go to the standard barristers and solicitors, go to these guys, go on their websites. And there's a lot of you out there now. And a lot of, lot of you are kind of a little bit under the radar, but I know David and Chris have been there at the forefront, yeah. the front line. <laughs> we were banging is, our saucepans and, for you. And this is one of the good reasons for doing these type of shows, of bringing different opinions yeah. together so that people get that idea rather than one one way only absolutely and and the little advert for your show next week we're doing it again i don't know who's coming on board because a lot of these guys are very busy doing workshops and all around the country but we have got some more people lined up and i was thinking on the last show which would be <clears throat> monday thursday or easter thursday whatever it is thursday. it's the day before good friday yeah it's not monday that's something else isn't it i don't know, I, I, I don't yeah, know. Um, anyway the thursday <coughs> before good friday um hopefully we can get loads of you on 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 board and maybe there's a couple of people i've asked um that have gone through the system and this the, you know this system and with success yes so and because i think that's really important because you know we're saying do this stand up and don't let them in and everything and then we hear chris's sad story yeah so we need Can, some positivity i'd like to ask um either of you actually the question because i think uh, david came up with this point which i hadn't really thought of before you mentioned that uh, some of these incidents that we see on youtube are actors do you think that there is opposition staging these things to show that when you challenge it, that it doesn't work, that that's, that is a message they're trying mm. to put to prevent people from doing exactly what we're um, talking about. 100%, Richard. Uh, just as the Chinese co uh, choreographed people falling over in the streets. Right. Right, yeah, no, that's that's and yeah, that's really interesting. Crisis act well, they are crisis actors, and actually, if you go online and Google crisis actors, you can you can hire them. You know, they're very readily avail available. So it's it's quite amazing what we've learned through this wow. this few last. And, few and years. as Chris said before, that actually what happened to him is very very rare, and, and and certainly with a police officer saying no, it's okay to go up the stairs. But they've got Chris not yeah marked, haven't they? I think Chris, um, yes. you know, they they you you guys that have been out as I say at the forefront, um, they they've. They've got their eye on you, let's yeah. put it that way. And that's why we have to be very mindful. Well, can I just say that when they came for me, and I'm not talking about that gas agent one, this was a COVID incident. When they came for me, they only came for me because in between the incident, which was just me being one of the three speakers on the promenade at Morecambe, in between that and them coming for me, I had become the people's lawyer. So David would not have been targeted, but, but they did want to target the people's lawyer. Mm. Got, a, got a question here from David Alexandra who says um, I sent a promissory note and bill of exchange to discharge my fictitious water bill the water company have rejected it by saying we do not accept bills of exchange should they return it? Well if, if, they've, if they've not returned it and they can't win if they've not returned it they've accepted it and if they return it, they've also accepted it. It's, it's, it's a bit complicated, but all you have to do is check their articles of association. And if you find a clause that say, says that they, um, they, are, um, they have capacity to deal with bills of exchange and promissory notes, then they are in breach of their own constitution. And you can point that out. And where would you find... Um their, not, what did you call it? Not their terms and conditions. Articles there. of association. Oh, you get, yes. Where yeah, was... Get their company's house number, go on company's house, and it's public domain documents. Their articles will be in, the, in their portfolio on company's house. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay, thank you for that. So they're that committing, 
They're committing multiple frauds when they say things like that and do things like that. And presumably if they don't return it, um, then they could be using it as money mm. uh, and, mm. and you're losing out. I mean, I that's, don't know how all that works, but uh, that's, mm. that's an area that That's one me. of the frauds. They're, they're mm. committing fraud by misrepresentation, fraud by, non-dis- fraud by non-disclosure, <clears throat> fraud by abuse of position. There's, there's so many frauds, it's just ridiculous. They're hard to pin down, but if you just use the word fraud in a respectful, <laughs> in a respectful tone, you know, uh, what I recommend to people is that rather than... You see, we don't shout these things from the rooftops and the rafters because that's how we get into trouble. Mm. What I suggest to people is that um, it seems to me that we, we could be dealing with a, a potential fraud here. So you play the innocent, almost childlike card, you yes. know, mm. and you're, it's like you're, you're scratching your chin wondering what's going on. But use the word fraud without accusing anybody of anything. Yes, that that was very good. Um, I'm back, by the way. Sorry about that. It's, no, that's um, all right. We lost you for a moment there, and uh, it's it's good to see you back. I'm afraid this uh, happens and, and your front, <laughs> and your front, and, and your side, and, and the your... top. Yeah. Um, can I say something? Of course now? you can. Um, no, no, of course you can. It's only, it's only, uh, <laughs> um, because they've got so much knowledge, I don't want to interrupt when they're, they're no, screaming no, no, out no, this, this great information. On. So somebody said they, they've suggested an, another name, I won't say it, but other, other people that need to come on the show on this panel. Yes. Because the panel really was to, the idea is to get the information out to as many people because it is a numbers game, isn't it, as, mm. as we know. So I would say if there is anybody that you know that has this knowledge, they've done the work about common law, constitutional law, natural law, all, all of this, then I would ask you to, to contact me. We'll put my email at the, dra- at the bottom, kizzy, K-I-Z-Z-I-63 at p-m dot me. So, um, and, and then I can again organise an, an, another panel if we can use Richard's show because he's got such a, an amazing you know, following because so many people want that information. And if, if they've been on the show, um, then at least I would know of y- them yeah, as well. Ab- and, absolutely. And people uh, yeah, absolutely. And people familiar. Yeah, be yeah, yeah. And, and I don't think they... It's nice to see your face, but some maybe want to be incognito. You know, we can have them... Well, we can, do, we can certainly do that as well. I mean, as, as much as possible, it's lovely to see their face because yeah. I think that it war- people warm to people and can, yeah. you know, it's a lot of trust. We've been talking about yes. trusts, yeah. but it's a lot of trust. But I know that some people, I have got some people coming on, I think, next early next week who do not want to be seen, no. but they want the information they've got out there. And, um, you know, what do you do? You, you, I want the information to go out and yeah. people will make their own due diligence and yeah. and decide, you, you know. And, and I think that's very important just to stress that don't take any advice or you know, the information, then just immediately apply it and think that's all you need to do uh, because you can get into hot water. Yeah. But we'd yeah. love to have more more, yeah, more views and ideas, really. Yeah, and and also um, what we're thinking of is, is having, like, a little road show, aren't we? We're talking about a road show, and one of the guys on our little group, um, Eli, who runs the Shine Seminars, has suggested the 26th of May. That's a total guess, so mm. ignore that. It might be the 26th. Um, with down big in Winnie Bagos, room. is that right? Big <laughs> Winnie Bagos and little sort of massage yeah. room. Oh, that would be wonderful. That... Um, but it is, yeah, he's booked Glastonbury, Sunday the 26th of May. And I think David was up for that. And I think Andy Barlow, yeah. I think I might have seen that. So that's, yeah, he's around if we, if yeah. So that's we're... what we're trying to do is, is get people on the, on the road as well. I know you guys have been doing a lot of, of workshops and, and courses and what have you, but it's about bringing this information to the masses in whichever way we can. So, yeah, watch this space for, for the for that if it comes about hopefully it will and just before you go um uh somebody's just mentioned duncan bruce has just said stan mcdonald would be great on the live show um Mm. stan he disappeared for a bit uh went back to canada i believe and uh, i'm now back in touch with him i thought something rather nasty had happened Mm. to poor old stan (laughs) because i said where did you go and he did tell me the story but he's back and i've got him booked on this show to i can't remember what we're going to talk about something exciting so he's he was very popular and we did a live question and answer show actually brilliant um which was very nice and people were donating money and i sent it all to him oh brilliant um so that was really good 
Um, have we got any more questions? We've got uh, about half an hour to go. And thank you, by the way, for the messages that have been popping up. We've been watching them in between talking, mm. uh, saying great show. Thanks very much, mm. guys. Really appreciate it and all that. We, you know, all that sort of positive it helps, Energy doesn't it? It's an inspiration. Absolutely, because this is about a you know a positive turnaround to yeah. the tyranny that is being forced on. And who yeah. would have thought? Here we are now, ten years ago. Yeah. Probably this would have been unachievable. Yeah, but, um, yeah, yeah. So you know, the internet has has you know, it's yeah, good. It's, it's good. It's, Some of the tools that have been out there. I don't know about AI, but um, again, it's it's who's using it, isn't it? It's it's like you can have a dog if you've got a good owner, and and you have a good dog. But if you've got a naughty owner, you're going to have a bad dog. So it's um, the same thing with yeah. Talking about that, Robert from Observation Deck is coming on the show, and he's been playing about with AI, ah. and he's asked AI about the legal fiction. He's asked them how you f go back <gasps> against bailiffs or enforcement agents. And I did ask him in exchange of emails, which I do ask about AI and chat GTP, is mm. how do you check the sources that chat, chat mm. GTP have? Because, you, you know, if you, if you read a book, you can see who the author is, mm. you can check out mm, who the they are. And the, yeah. Exactly. But that's my only reserve. We've got some more questions coming in. Uh, have you got any that you want to well, go? Well, I've only got the one that you you sent and you put on the group that oh, yeah. came do, in. Shall do, I mention do that? that? One, is yeah. this going to the good old? Um, oh, is that the one? Uh, yes, yeah, smart meters. Oh, is that the right one? Um, question for tonight. Could I pose a question for tonight's panel around? Oh, this isn't the one I wanted to say actually. Council tax again. Back to council tax. Having received my bill with liable people being listed as in capitals, Mr. Capitalized Fiction, would it not seem reasonable as beneficiary to that capitalized fiction and the attached, I can never say this word, say Covey, say that. Oh, the Keska Covey. Keska Covey, Keska yeah. Um, trust. To simply authorize the local authority to settle from the said trust as that is the stated fiction they claim to be liable on the council tax bill. Does that make sense? Yeah. So taking the money out of the trust, basically, isn't it? Yeah, take the money out of the Keska Covey. Would anybody like to answer that? I'll uh, very well, briefly um, say that, yeah, it sounds like a good idea. I know almost nothing about it, but if it works, try it and feed back the success. Brilliant. And can I David, just add? Can yeah. I just add something? Um, in theory, it is a good remedy, but in practice, I, I would say it's got very little chance of success. And the reason why I say that is because precisely, funnily enough, for the same reason I've just said what I've just said, it's such a good remedy, they can't afford it to succeed because everybody will jump on the bandwagon and that's the end of council tax. So remember, we're playing the war games. These are war games, political shenanigans, and what, what in theory works in practice no. Um, so what does that mean? Uh, don't give up. Try it. If, if, prove me wrong. I love to be proven wrong um, because what do, at the end of the day, what do I know? I'm only just one man. Um, but just be prepared for, f uh, for it not to work and to find some, something else. And the something else uh, are the things that I teach on my course, basically. That's one way. There's always plenty of other remedy. And, and I think that's a good, uh, good observation for all of the stuff, isn't it? To, to not just assume it's going to work just immediately, that there might be some toing and froing and shifting and not shifting, <laughs> whatever the word is, um, uh, on, on all these things that we're doing. We mustn't expect that you've just written that one letter and that's it, you know, bang, off it goes. And, oh, there we are. I've sorted that problem out. That, that there's going to be pushback from these people who've always been winning for so long. Um, you know, the audacity of ordinary everyday people getting in touch with them and saying, actually, I, I want to challenge you must be quite uh, a shock for them. Mm. So uh, um, I had a, a message here that uh, the lovely Julia is monitoring, by the way. And thank you, Julia, for doing the monitoring in the uh, chat. She says, is there a book that any of the panel can recommend that would educate one on how to set up a trust without a solicitor? Is there any, or, or even a, a website, I suppose, that might do that? Um, anybody, Chris or um, David? Well, I've been looking at a book, which is excellent. Um, it's called Equity and Trust. Uh, and it's about uh, 12, 1,150 pages, so it's not easy to get through. But I would recommend actually doing a simple program, just focusing on setting up trusts and how to go about it. 
And uh, I think we ought to try and get one or two experts together to mm. go through a simple process for people. Brilliant. David. If I, if I can add a couple of things. Um, I sometimes signpost people to an American site called Brilliance in Commerce. And they have a natural trust handbook. Just as a, as a useful starting point, that's all. It may it, uh, it just give you an idea of uh, navigating this, this very uh, grey area. I think, and in I mean, sorry. sorry, no, I was just going to say, I think it's very good to start in a very simple way because when Chris was talking about a book, I've got a similar book with a similar name of a similar amount of pages in, a great big tome of thing, and I tried to read it. And I was lost very quickly because I think I needed to understand the ground, you know, very simple terms and slowly come to it softly, softly, because I thought, oh, I'll just solve all this by reading this massive tome. And I was just reading words and they weren't making anything uh, sensible in my head. So, um, uh, the the so, thing sorry, I would David. add to that, uh, yes, if David. I can, um, is... Of course. Um, there's a course called Law for Mankind, which I think... Uh, deals in very, very, very simplified trust language, how to create a very simple trust as a man or a woman, run by, I think it's Greg and, Greg and Paul, I think. One's American, one's British. Law for Mankind. And my own course will give you a grounding in the principles of trust and equity that will help you. It's, not, it's a part of the course. It's not, by, uh, by any means, a substantial part, but it's a good grounding so there's um there's plenty of ways and that natural trust handbook of brilliance in commerce is just 70 very easy to read pages so it's a it's a so those are three good starting points yeah thanks for that guys uh much appreciated uh we've not had uh, we've got um 35 minutes or so left not had uh, any news from alan of no, salisbury I checked. No, I think he's off grid, oh hang on so. i've got your microphone switched oh, down oh sorry no we haven't heard from alan i did just check but he's obviously not gonna make it i think he's uh, run out of power well not to worry <laughs> our two wonderful panelists are doing mm. excellent work and um uh, we we're whipping them hard to get those oh, answers steady richard steady. sorry <laughs> can i add a couple of uh, bits here um, please do a lot of people ask me about um cooperatives and how to set up alternative structures so that when we do move into a better world we've got the basis for which we can do it that's one thing and the other one is about prosecuting some of our leaders for what is going on right now both of those areas are i'm frequently asked about them and it may be mm. worthwhile just checking if people have questions around those two areas Right, yeah, that's mm. interesting. Very. Um, <clears throat> I, I like this comment. It says, be the one to execute your trust. Be the one to ex execute your own trust. Be the, uh, there's a book, isn't there, called that? I've got it. Oh, maybe that's got what it. it's referring to. Yeah, oh, have you? There's a book Oh, yeah, there. by David Robinson. I didn't read the end, the end bit. Ah, okay. um, uh, Yeah, I sent, uh, sent off that book uh, about a month ago. And, right. Um, it's, it's easy to read. Um, uh, but you've got to get all the concepts into it. Yeah, you've got to really understand this, haven't you? You've, re you've really got to understand it. And it's the same thing as the, the question that the lovely Julie has just passed. How should we deal with repeated bailiffs, threatening letters and emails? I mean, it, it's, what, what does one do when they keep coming? Do you send them back? They say, yeah, uh, I mean, uh, people have... Sorry. Yeah, hang on. Um, here we go. It's that here time of oh, the, the evening. <laughs> oh, the comedy glasses are back on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. Um, OK, let me just go through very quickly some of the offences committed by enforcement agents. I'll, f I'll focus more on the ones that they commit when they're writing to you. Um, well, we mentioned the criminal exploitation, not giving you a choice. Modern Slavery Act 2015, Section 3, Subsection 5. There's Harassment, Protection from Harassment Act 1997, Sections 1 and Section 3. Malicious communication, mm -hmm. which is sending threatening letters um, or just threatening, or, or that's Malicious Communications Act 1988, or sending annoying communications, that's the Communications Act 2003. Um, let's have a look. Make, uh, there's blackmail, theft act 1968, section 21. If they're very, very heavy handed threats, that could be demanding money with menaces. 
Um, what else? I think that'll. What do would you be... call uh, um, demanding money with menaces? I mean, how would you? Uh, what would you d- say the menaces are, other than well, give us your well, sodding money, mate, yeah, or, or a bash your, you yeah. know, bash your Yeah, I suppose it's stop. yes. It's really f- it's intimidate intimidatory tactics. Yeah, it's yeah. harassment, isn't it? I mean, can you do something on the the harassment act? If there is such an act. Yes, absolutely. If it's, if it's particularly aggravated, you only need one incident. Otherwise, it's known as a course of conduct. Mm. I'll give you an example of uh, what happened to me uh, 10 days ago. The police officers that said there, unless you let, let these guys in, I shall arrest all five of you. All five? There was four friends of mine. Oh, OK. Uh, I thought myself, you meant the, the, the debt collectors. Yes. <laughs> and uh, that was a threat. And, um, wow, and he can't do that. But what would they not. do? I mean, would they, uh, you know, in, in some part, it's probably better to have been arrested rather than beaten up. I would well, have, I know. would have preferred it. I have been arrested many times. <clears throat> mm. Yeah, but in, you didn't know that they were going to do that, of course. No, absolutely not. I thought I was no. going to be arrested. And but, getting but there, ready every, for it. every cloud has a silver lining. And although it's not a very nice situation that you've gone through, you are being the warrior here, Chris. And, and that's why I think it's really, really important for us to see the outcome, you know, when you pursue this and, and, and I get will this, this um, keep you individual. in touch with it. Yeah, de- definitely, because that's what we need. Somebody has to, to, to take the lead and you guys are. So again, hat goes off to you, huge respect. Can I just jump in with something? Um, what we all forget at times, funnily enough, the braver we are, the more we f- we're more likely to forget it, is that any words or behavior that put you in anxiety or fear is a common law crime known as assault. Is it? People mm. get assault and battery confused. The physical, the mm. physicality of it, like putting a jab in someone when they haven't given informed consent, that's battery. Right. Touching someone in a threatening way is battery. But simply saying, we're going to arrest you with no lawful justification is criminal assault even by a police officer. In fact, especially by a police officer because they should know better. Yeah, absolutely. And they have, oh, the, they have the renown, they have the, the power of arrest. So, so we have to remember that at all times, people, that if you are put into anxiety, you have been assaulted and that is a crime. Mm. And will and they you're... take that seriously if you go to the police station the next day or that afternoon, whatever, and say, I have been assaulted, I was threatened with mm. an arrest by a sergeant who was at my house? Would they, I mean, will they actually do it? Because you keep hearing <clears throat> people struggling to record crime and get a crime number from police stations saying, oh, we're not interested. No, uh, the, in, in the ordinary course of events, no, they, they will they will treat you as a nuisance and uh, you won't get a positive outcome. But if enough people are doing mm. this, um, then it builds, up, it builds up the pressure. We build up pressure on, on them and, mm. and they will crack eventually. So people out there keep doing it, knowing that in an isolated individual case, it will almost certainly not have any positive outcome. But collectively, we are building up uh, evidence uh, that, that, that will put pressure on the system and it will accelerate its mm. uh, imminent implosion. And I think this is a nice, a couple of nice comments from Truth Teller. He reminds us that the cowardly lion was a bully, but was a true coward when someone stood up to him. He lacks true courage. And then the immediate comment underneath from Leave My Rights Alone says, the straw man has no heart. So I think it's quite nice to remind ourselves of these things from the, from the Wizard of Oz, you know? Yep. So it's a lot of people in uniform with fists, but they're cowards, a lot of them. They have to hide behind a uniform. And the Tin Man was the tax identification number. <laughs> OK. <laughs> the tax identification number. T-I-N, yeah, that's, yeah. The, that's yeah. the Tin Man. Yeah, that's the Is that, t- is that the... probably is true? That's because they tell us everything in the stories, don't they? So yeah. the oh, no, 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 so... but it's one of the most... Um, oh. It's one of the, the, the uh, biggest disclosure films of all time. It's known right? amongst freedom, uh, lawful, sovereign circles. It's one of the big yeah. ones. 
It would be good to go through that film. Oh, I think we should analyse it. You know, analyse it one, but you know, with somebody who knows. And I would then the have following no week, we could do Mamma Mia. <laughs> and the wi- okay, just on this subject, I can't resist this. The Wizard yeah. of Oz yeah. was the dark magician that turned gold mm. measured in ounces into fictitious currency. Oh, right. There you go. Yes. There you go. The Wizard of Oz. What well, he was because because because, because the wonderful well, Oz, Oz, Oz is short for ounces of gold. Oz ounces mm. of gold. The yellow brick road gold. Oh. Yes. And the wizard is the dark satanic bankster that makes right. us believe that his banknotes are are the equivalent of gold. Right. Fascinating. Wow. That's really interesting. I think we should analyse that. I think you should do a show. Yeah. Yes. Get Judy Garland. There's no place like yeah. home. There's no place and like luckily, that. I'm here. <laughs> um, um, can yeah. I say something here again? Of this course is, you can. Bless you. Can I, just, I say just, something? Can I, can I put my hand up, sir? See, we're conditioned, aren't we? Yeah, we are. Need to go to um, Mr. Alderman's School of, of Learning and, and be de-educated. Um, Right, so you sent this. Thank you, Richard. That's you right. sent this last night on the little group. This is about smart meters, and a couple of people have contacted me actually through the Freedom Network about smart meters, and and it's difficult to answer individuals, although we're doing our best, isn't it? it the, the personal story, but we're doing our best. So, smart meter question statement for tonight: um, If is a, a, somebody from the fan of the channel? Um, so now he says there is one. There is one. Uh, <laughs> Fantastic. There's, nice. There's more. There's more there's double numbers here. Double blimey. double figures. So this chap or chapess says, I work for one of the big six energy companies. Uh, uh, uh. Uh-oh. And I'm happy to help anyone who comes to you with a smart meter concern. They do not need them. They are not mandated. And old meters, especially those with manual non-digital meters, last for a long time. I was hoping they don't because I've got a problem with my meter saying I thought they only had a shelf life of 10 years. But that's another story. However, all modern companies now will not support traditional meters, and if they have an issue with their meter, it will be replaced with a smart meter, unfortunately. And the question is... Well, that was it. You sent it. It was just a statement. <laughs> but it, it was just a statement. But I think it's, it's the guy that works for one of the companies. Yes. So he, he's just telling that. And he, I think he was saying he can assist. I'm happy to help anyone who comes to us or you with uh, concerns about the smart meter. So I think that's really... So, I mean, some of the questions that I've had, which would be good to put to the panel, yeah. is um, do you have to have them? Um, is it mandatory? Can they force them down your throat? Um, and uh, if they do, do you have to let them in to change yeah. it? Because there was a law. The government was putting a law through, wasn't it, saying that they were... Yeah, the, the, I think smiling. the Energy Act is... David is so happy here. Look, you can't wait to get at this one. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's break down the word mandated just as we broke down the word required before. Mandated means that you're under contract. Mandated, you can only mandate, so the government can mandate the NHS and that's it. The government can mandate the uh, service providers for gas, electricity, but that's it. If, if you are a man or a woman, unless you've signed a contract, and very, uh, none of us have, you're, you cannot be mandated. Um, so it, the short answer to the question, can you be mandated, track required? Y- can you be requested? Can you be asked? Yes. Can you say no? Yes. End of. Very right. simple. Yeah. That is the fear that uh, comes in. I, I get quite a lot of those. If I do a monologue about smart meters for yeah. any reason, people are saying, oh, but I'm being pressured to yeah. change. They're telling me that they're no longer supporting these meters, and therefore, if I have a, a new meter, I've got to, to have, uh, you know. And, we don't and, want and them. I've well, answered them by saying, um, you know, use the fact that you, nobody knows uh, what the um, radiation damage is, and are they have they got any liability insurance if they drop dead? <laughs> yeah. Well, we're back. We are. We're back to the notice of conditional acceptance, uh, provided you can prove that they're safe. Um, provided that you can prove that they are going to outperform uh, previous meters because it looks as though my... Uh, and show that my analog meter is defective in some way. I have a friend he, who's done my course, actually, who's just written a letter to his service or alleged supplier, and they're not suppliers, that's another day's work, um, saying that the matter, as far as I'm concerned, is closed. There'll be no smart meter in this house, but if you, if you contact me... I will allow you to write to me one more time in the next 12 months. If you write to me or contact me beyond that, then I will charge, I I forget what he put, £1,000 per phone call or £2,000 per letter to deal with the admin. So you you put them off wanting to pester you. 
I mean, to be honest, he's being generous, even allowing them even one communication. But the point is that we should be dealing with these people on, on uh, uh, terms that are at least equal, if not favourable, and, mm. and putting, t putting the ball back, back in their court and um, you know, m reminding them in no uncertain terms that we're the customer, therefore what we say goes. And guess what? Customer's always right. Mm. Um, an interesting comment that I had from one, uh, somebody else on smart meters uh, was they, every time they have a conversation with anybody and, and they just want to say, I don't want a smart meter, they have to go through this automated system in which they are asked personal data every time. Can you answer one of these four questions? And it's always personal data in order to so-called verify themselves. And they were asking, is it really necessary to continually go through this personal data? I did say to them that when, if and when they ever ring you, ask them for some personal data. <laughs> to, you know, where do you yeah. live? What's your birth date? And see how they like it, because they probably will not go any further with the conversation. Yeah, turn it on them, turn it back. But, In uh, fact, that's the best way to deal with cold callers. Just say, mm. before I answer any of your questions, I, <clears throat> I would like to do pass, put you through security I need your name, full name, address, and date of birth, please. Yeah. You won't, they'll put the phone down very quickly. You won't hear from them again. Yeah. We've got a question here from Iceman Coffee. Chris or Dave, is there a way where you can express there's a trust in place to the relevant parties to make them aware that there's a trust in place? Then fine tune the trust as you go along. So I think we sort of, we answered that at the beginning, didn't we? More or less saying, do your trust and then send it off to everybody. Yeah, I, yeah, don't know I wouldn't that... uh, fine tune it as you go along. I mean, it's important at the beginning. to have it right from the start and be quite clear what it is you're putting in trust and the conditions that have to be met and the date on which it will be revoked. Then you can fine tune it for the next year in slightly different way if you've got different um, people asking you for money and so on. But don't change it, but just send them a copy of your original document so they you, can meet the conditions. And revoke, you said when it's going to be revoked. Does yes, that mean... so the, all the ones that I've done based on taxation are revoked on April the 5th, which is the last day of the financial year. So mm. April the 6th is the first day of the next financial year. So revoke it on the last day of the financial year because those that, that's the system they operate to. So I'm it's confused. Does it revoke mean like put a stop to it? It, it change it, uh, yes exactly put a stop to it so oh hang on so you're putting a stop to your own trust or then you're re you're it's issuing a another taxation one trust for the beneficiary okay and uh, you are only a secondary beneficiary and not a primary beneficiary right you are the settler and the trustee and the secondary beneficiary but not the primary beneficiary if you put it as a primary beneficiary you commit a criminal offense I'm just going to slip in a question here because um, we're coming close to the end and I want to give you both an opportunity to be able to tell us what you're doing in the future so that if anybody wants to come along and see you. Um, this is an interesting question um, which comes from Mr Menson. He says, are utilities already paid for, hence they send you a gyro slip as a bill? Does anybody know anything about that? Uh, well... <laughs> It, they are really, to be quite honest. Uh, when you can, when you drill down deep into the arena of money, you you soon come to the conclusion. If you watch the videos of Mike Maloney, for example, or the work of R Professor Richard Werner with a W because he's German, then you will realise that there is no money. Therefore, nobody could pay for anything anyway. Mm -hmm. Nobody's been able to pay any for anything anyway for about a hundred years, roughly. So um, everything is in trust, everything is in bankruptcy, everything is in administration, and um, the source of the energy, whether it's water, gas, or electricity, is natural, and natural resources, unless I'm grievously mistaken, cannot be owned, because only the creator can own them. So mm -hmm. no service corporation, and indeed not even any government, can pretend to own that resource. It's all mind play, mm. mind play. Mm. That's all it is. Um, if it helps to consider it as prepaid, 
because maybe your grandfather helped uh, dig, dig up the road and put the pipes down, then fair enough. But it was sweat equity from our ancestors that laid the foundations. Um, if in doubt, put them to prove that they own these resources and that you are in contract to pay for something and that they are providing consideration, tangible consideration. No, it's all credit brokerage and it's all mm. playing on mm. our minds. Yeah. Can I add to that? Um, yes, of course. Remember that it's also um, public property. All of these companies were public property and Mrs. Thatcher, who started the whole uh, private, uh, privatization process, had no right and uh, to sell public property. Mm. And uh, she just took that upon herself and her government and um, handed it over. It was all a criminal offence at the time. Brilliant. Well, listen, we're coming to the end of the show um, and it's been fantastic. Lots of questions. We hope that we've answered many questions that people have been putting out. We've been trying to keep an eye on the comments for you, um, various bits and bobs. Before we go, as I said just now, it'd be nice just to give the panel a chance to, if they're anywhere in the next couple of weeks. I know David's uh, hinted at the place that we're up north. Up north. Up north. Up Bye, north. It, lad. Oh, Enjoy lad. that, won't That you? I'm involved with. But um, start with you, Chris. Are you, uh, are you giving any talks or doing anything that we should know about? Uh, yes. Basically, I'm trying to help the uh, No Tax for Genocide group uh, to get the word out. And we are starting to get interest from uh, overseas, which is nice as well. Mm. Wow. Um, so uh, that's one of the things. I'm giving a talk on Sunday. Um, it's a, at a private house with 20 invited guests, so I won't uh, publicize it. Sure. Um, and yes, I give talks all around the country. I'm up in Birmingham shortly and various <laughs> other places. So. Um, and people can contact you through your website, presumably, if they would like to uh, get indeed, you. Indeed, yes, talk. indeed. So either probityco.com or probityco.org. Um, we're also trying to support prosecutions of some of our leaders. Uh, I originally uh, came into the government uh, sites when I tried to take Blair and others to court for war crimes, crimes against humanity and genocide. And I'm trying right now to do the same, to reinstigate those um, those prosecutions, criminal proceedings rather, to ensure that some of our leaders are held to account for the up to a million uh, deaths that they have caused. Um, people well, like Johnson and others. Powerful so stuff. Really focusing on that. And uh, David, uh, before we run out of time, um, I, you're often gallivanting about the country. What, uh, apart from the ones that you've just told us, or you're welcome to mention them again, of course, um, what are you up to and where can people find you? Well, with your permission, may I just briefly share my screen? Um, I can't really do that on the way that we do it. I can't grab it's not it not been set easy. up, no. Oh, you can't. OK, all right. Sorry um, about that. All right, I'll have to just discuss it then. Well... Uh, my, with a view to helping the farmers and anyone who's going to be rallying, gathering and out there fighting their corner, I've created a version of my personal protection card and it's on one of the pages of my website. It's QR coded for a PDF download and it's called Universal Self-Protection to avoid conflict and unnecessary stress and aggravation with police or agents who are up to no good and trying to kettle you or corral you or accuse you of crimes that you've not committed. So that's on my website with a QR code and it's called Universal Self-Protection. Um, next week, I'm gonna add to that uh, the equivalent for individuals who are assailed by police. Uh, they're not gathering, they're just, they're just out there by themselves. Maybe they're driving along and people who are threatened with or actually receive visits at home or people who receive cold calls that threaten them. So there'll be essentially two info packs. One is for the gatherings and one is for the individual that's being assaulted, threatened, etc., etc. And And I really need those to go out there. They are QR coded so people will be able to download them easily. Um, where yeah. am I going to be? Yes, I mentioned it. Um, tomorrow in Shoreham by Sea near Brighton. 
and Burnley on Sunday the 24th with Richard and John O'Looney and I think it's Carly Spell. Um, and then there's a hiatus in April. If anyone particularly in the London area would like a, uh, a, a talk, and my current talk is called Building Resilience to Navigate the Apocalypse, then please get in touch and I'll come and do a talk in the London area because mm. I haven't done London for a little while. Uh, then in May, I'm in Q Stoke and North Devon towards the end of May. And as you say, might be involved in this um, round, well, this uh, panel, live panel organized by Eli. Online, I've got my course. People are welcome to sign up. It's the only thing I charge for. Everything else is either free completely or by donation because I have to earn some kind of living until further notice. Mm -hmm. And you can either do it by yourself quietly, um, downloading all the materials you need, uh, an incredible amount of materials, uh, or, and for an extra fee, uh, join the never-ending Until Kingdom Come live Q&A sessions on Zoom. And I do three of those a month. And if you need to join, uh, come on forever, then come on forever. There's no, it's a time, there's no time, uh, it's not a time-stamped course, it's a forever course. Right, brilliant. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bye. David. Um, I'll be doing a hillbilly dance routine uh, next week <laughs> at a superstore near you. Um, Karen, you've got Freedom um, events coming up. I haven't have. You? May oh, as well gosh, mention I think, yeah, some why, of those. why not? Yeah, but I don't know when they are. I think um, I do, because you're coming to it. I'm I think it's some... the 3rd third, third to 5th of May at Hope Sussex. We've got um, the 12th Uprise and Shine Conference, um, but and that will be on, on the, the Freedom Network website which is still, you know, very active. So if people want to find, like, because on this chat, a lot of people said, oh, can we meet up maybe afterwards up north and what have you, which is great because it is about bringing people together. So if you do go onto the Freedom Network a website, you can go onto the interactive map and find hubs in your area um, and, and find your local tribe um, to, you know, to get the information out and, mm. and, and do what we're all doing. And also before I just finished, I just wanted to say to learn more about trusts i've just i haven't read the book yet it's just arrived today from that jungle shop you know the one i'm referring oh, yeah. to um the called, big river <laughs> yeah yeah the big river alice by alistair hudson called understanding equity and trusts and apparently there's a lot of information in that book so i'm going to start really learning it so i can you know stand up for myself and i know what i'm talking about so you might want to try and find a copy of that understanding you just, equity you just and bought trust. the last one that's well do you know that's the thing there's so many issues this is the seventh edition but they become very expensive because some people don't want us to buy them do they no. that's the thing no. well ladies and gentlemen we've been on there for two hours live thank you so much for joining us mm. and uh, being part of it a very very big thanks to our wonderful panel uh, we have here, of course, Chris um, Coverdale. Thank you so much, Chris. Delighted. And uh, it's uh, been an absolute pleasure. And uh, David Edelman, the people's lawyer. I was hoping you'd say something so the screen. Oh, I'm sorry. Change. I was uh, just. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. There, we go. Uh, there you go. There I am. Yeah, it's been. Thank you very much, you guys, Richard and um, Karen, Karen, and it's and Chris as well. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, let's do it again sometime. Indeedy. Next week. <laughs> uh, big thanks to the lovely Julia, who you can't see, who's been uh, moderating and just making sure everyone's behaving themselves in the chat room. And uh, m enormous thanks to you, the viewer, for coming along and uh, asking all your questions. We'll be doing it all again next week at the same time. We have a different panel. Do we know who they are? Not sure. Not sure. Exciting. Uh, Pinky and Perky will be there with <laughs> Noddy and Toyland, so do come along <laughs> and you see and me. those. That, yes, don't rely on me, certainly. Um, so thank you very much. I'll be back, of course, with more monologues and uh, other interviews and what have you. Uh, but in the meantime, from the whole team, thank you for watching. Look thank after you. yourself. Take care. And uh, we'll be back again soon. Yeah. Good night. Bye-bye.